Welcome to the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. A show all about reviewing dinosaurs on a scale of 1 to 10 fossils before only the elite terrible lizards make it into the prehistoric cage match. This program is presented by the Stomp Tromp Roar Company and can be heard within all the rock layers across the planet. Grab your dinosaurs and your official scorecard because it's now time to dig for dinosaurs. Here's your Mesozoic host, Dinosaur Ranger Anthony. Here we go, my junior paleontologist. It's time to hit the road, but not just any road. We're heading down the famous highway called Route 66. Now this is your truck driving host, Dinosaur Ranger Anthony, and today we're hauling all the sound waves of the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. As you might have noticed, over the last couple of seasons of my podcast, each episode has had an underlying theme along with each prehistoric review. Now for example, last week we visited Lost Dinosaurs, or Las Vegas, as we reviewed the Nevada Dromius. Now for this season, I thought I would add a season-long theme, and we're taking the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast on a road trip across America. And for episode number 62, we're jumping on Route 66, just outside of Nevada, and we're heading east towards the Lone Star State of Texas. And that's where we'll find today's holotype genus for today's Triassic period creature. I wanted to make it all the way to Greenbow, Alabama for this episode, but it made more sense to take a pit stop in Texas along the way. But before we hit the pavement for today's prehistoric review, let's update you guys on some dinopreneur news. Now you guys, last Thursday I started a huge 10 day show schedule. Can you believe it? This is going to be a good prep for what I have in store for me this June and July. It's just a small storm before the huge twister I have waiting for me this summer. I've got somewhere around 139 shows. That's right, 139 shows booked so far for this year. Is that just crazy or what? It's even crazier than today's Triassic creature that we're going to review. I'm just going to keep cruising down Route 66. Now remember, I also started the Omaha Dinosaur Club for this summer. So if you live in or around the Omaha area, I only have nine more spots open for my second session, and that will be on Thursday, July 6th. So if you want to be a part of this awesome dinosaur one-day summer camp, then go to my website, Stomp chomproar.com to learn more. Now, I'd also love for this club to become a monthly meeting, like on the first Saturday of every month. How cool would that be to continue this into the fall? I just can't wait to see how the Omaha Dinosaur Club evolves all throughout 2023. Now, everybody, let's give a few shout-outs today before we start our prehistoric review. A very, very happy birthday, sixth birthday to my junior dinosaur Ranger Rowan celebrated his sixth birthday last Monday. I hope he had just an amazing day. Also, thank you to St. Cecilia's Cathedral School. I took my prehistoric pep rally out there for the pre-K through fifth graders. We just had so much fun. And fun fact, my oldest daughter's name is Cecilia after the Saint of Music, just like the St. Cecilia Cathedral School. So cool. Now, you guys, last Saturday, we went to the Westside High School craft and vendor fair. I sold all my dig kits, my slime kits, and my fossil dough kits. We just had so much fun out there, you guys. It was a blast. And if you want to buy one of my awesome homemade kits, then just go to my website, stompchomproar.com, and you can learn more about all my homemade uh, dig kits that I make here at the Stomp Chomp Roar house. Totally cool. Now, happy sixth birthday to Ethan. We went and were a part of his Jurassic birthday party on 
Sunday. We just had a blast out there. Also, thank you guys. Uh, tomorrow on Tuesday, I'm going up to Tecama, Nebraska, about an hour north of Omaha, where I live. So we're going to visit the Tecama CDC, and then we're going to go to the Tecama Herman Elementary School, take our prehistoric pep rally, all of our fossils, our dinosaurs, our volcano up there to Tecama, and we're going to have tons of fun. I cannot wait to go there tomorrow. Then on Wednesday and Thursday of this week, I'm heading back to the Happy Face Preschool. I had so much fun there last year, and I can't wait to go back. I was so happy when they reached out to me. They wanted me to come back for another year, so I can't wait to go see all their learners, their students again this year. Happy fifth birthday to one and only, you guys, one of my amazing listeners, Julian. Thank you so much for listening to the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. I heard it was your birthday coming up, and I hope you have a dynamite birthday. I cannot wait. Now, you guys, a special shout out to another Dinosaur Review for Kids listener, Emery. Emery sent me an email back in December, you guys, and requested this prehistoric genus, this Triassic creature that I'm reviewing today. So thank you, Emery, for requesting this genus. Now, and also a very, very, very Happy third birthday to my mischievous little Spinosaurus Paleo. That's right, my Spinosaurus turned three years old yesterday. That was the three-year anniversary since I unboxed Paleo for the world to see. My Patreon club kids and I celebrated the big day with a virtual birthday party. And let me just go in and grab him. So here is Paleo right here. You guys can see Paleo for my YouTube watchers, for my video cast. So right here on my screen in my science lab is Paleo, my baby Spinosaurus, sporting an awesome birthday hat right there. So it was three years since I opened Paleo and unboxed him for the whole world to see. So Paleo, have a very happy birthday. So there's our Paleo puppet. We'll set Paleo back down right there and we'll get right back into our podcast. It was so much fun doing our virtual birthday party yesterday. Yesterday. And you can see pictures of Paleo and I from his birthday on my Facebook page. Just visit Stomp Chomp Roar on Facebook. Now you guys, let's grab our scorecards and shift this 18-wheeler into gear because it's time to head down Route 66 for our next review. Er, er. Here we go, all my junior paleontologists. We're on the famous Route 66 for today's awesome prehistoric review. And today we're talking about the Postosuchus. The Postosuchus. And I just so happen to have one here in my science lab studio from Jurassic World. Super cool blue color. I love this Postosuchus toy. Now, you guys, the Postosuchus, what does this name mean of this prehistoric creature? Well, the Postosuchus means crocodile from post. The crocodile from post, and it's from near the post quarry down in the state of Texas. Now, our postosuchus, what kind of animal is this? We know it's not a technically a real dinosaur, but it is a reptile. So the postosuchus is a reptile. Those are the dry, scaly skinned creatures that lay eggs. They lay eggs just like dinosaurs. Now, our reptile, our postosuchus, falls into the group of creatures called Pseudosuchia. So the Pseudosuchia, and then those are like the archosaur type group that fall into those reptiles, and then it falls into an animal order, or an animal family, I'm sorry, and that family is the Ryesuchids. The Ryesuchids. So our Postosuchus is a reptile, and then a Pseudosuchia, and then a Ryesuchid. So that is the order for our Postosuchus. Now, how big was this creature? What was the length, the height, and the weight of our Postosuchus? Well, this creature, everybody, is about 16 to 20 feet in length, or 5.6 meters. It gets to be about 4 feet high, or 1.2 meters, and can weigh up to around 1,000 pounds. 1,000 pounds! Now, you guys, our Postosuchus is the apex predator. It's the largest size of its 
time and its area that it lived in. So even though it's not very big like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, it's only 16 to 20 feet long, 4 feet high, it's still the apex predator or the largest predator of its time period and in the area in which it lived in. Many of the dinosaurs during this time that are post Osuchus lived were very, very small. They're very small dinosaurs. There was no ginormous dinosaurs yet. Now, how fast was this creature? How quick was that post Osuchus when we are clocking it with our speed gun? Well, it's very unknown. We don't know how fast our post Osuchus would have ran or maybe swim throughout all the water, but we do know that our saltwater crocodiles that live today, they're about 15 to 18 miles per hour. So we can maybe assume that our post Osuchus might fall somewhere within those teens, maybe 15 to 18 miles per hour. Now, our post Osuchus, some people believe it might have even walked on a bipedal stance. That's right. The post Osuchus, the crocodile from post, might have walked on a two-legged stance. So they had some more of an upright stance like the dinosaurs. And we believe that like other crocodiles, that they were quadrupedal, that they would have been walking on all four legs. But some scientists believe that they might have even walked on two legs. So imagine a crocodile running around on two legs, sort of like a T-Rex. Wouldn't that just be crazy to see back during the Mesozoic era? Now, you guys, what weapons or defense, what characteristics did our post osuchus have back during prehistoric times? Well, you guys, the skull or the head of our post osuchus was from, uh, it was about 22 inches in length. They had a very deep skull, so it was more narrow at the snout or at the tip of the nose, and it get it got wider as the skull went back about 22 inches. Now they have 47 hook and dagger-like teeth, and many of them are all different sizes, from one to three inches in length. Their teeth were all very different, like some crocodilians we see today. They have all these hook and dagger-like teeth. Now the orbit or the eye of our post osuchus, the eye hole is quite large. So we believe that our post osuchus would have had good long distance eyesight and they would have been able to see very good within the environment they were living in. Now they also believe that they might have had nose sensors. So our post osuchus might have had little nose sensors at the end of its snout and that would have helped it detect all kinds of motion as it was swimming in the water. Maybe it could see or feel the vibrations of a creature jumping into the water or even getting a drink downstream. Now our post osuchus after that 22 inch uh, deep skull, they had an elongated, uh, elongated neck and they had a short and strong body that was covered in osteoderms, those scoots like we see on all the other crocodiles that live today. So they had body armor on the back of their neck, on their back, and maybe even down their tail. So those osteoderms, those scoots, Scoots are going to be body armor to help protect their backs from some other types of creatures. But remember, our post osuchus is the apex predator of its time and area. Now, they also had short but strong forelimbs. And forelimbs are like their front arms, just like our arms. So they're short but strong, and they're about half the size of their back legs. Now, let's talk about their claws. The post osuchus had 10 10 fingers and 10 toes, just like we have 10 fingers and 10 toes. But what sets the claws apart of our post osuchus is they have a hooked claw, one hooked claw on each hand and one hooked claw on each finger. Foot. That's right. So when we look at the fingers of our post osuchus, each one has somewhat of a claw, but they have a hooked claw on the first finger. So the one that would sort of be like their thumb, that one is going to have somewhat of a hooked claw on it. And then when we look at their toes, it's the fourth toe that has somewhat of a hooked claw. So maybe they're using these hooked claws to be able to get traction as they're running around. Maybe it's helping them get all kinds kinds of food. They can use it a little bit as they're hunting for all kinds of prey. Who knows what they're using this odd shaped hooked claw for? It's totally unique, totally awesome for our post
Ostosuchus. Now they have two very strong hind legs. Their back legs are very strong and they have that long tail behind them covered in those scoots, those osteoderms. They're using it for all kinds of balance. Because remember, our Postosuchus might be walking or running on two legs in that bipedal stance. And those strong legs back there behind them are going to help them rear up onto their back legs as maybe they're running all throughout the Mesozoic era. Now when scientists look at the limb portion and the weight bearing sections of our Postosuchus's body, that's how they can determine that maybe they're a land dweller. They lived on land. Or maybe they're even walking in that bipedal stance on those two strong legs. Just like many of those theropod dinosaurs. Now where did this creature, our Postosuchus, where did it live and how long did this genus live during the Mesozoic era? Remember, it's the apex predator of its time. So our Postosuchus is living between 237 to 201 million years ago during that late Triassic period. And it was found here in North America where dinosaur ranger Anthony lives. Now the holotype or the first fossil found of this creature was found near the post, uh, post city down in Texas, near the post quarry down there in Texas. It was found near uh, or on the Cooper Canyon formation. So the rock formation called the Cooper Canyon. Now they've also found this genus, this prehistoric creature, our Postosuchus in the states of Arizona, New Mexico, and surprisingly even North Carolina. So we find it down there in the southwestern United States and they even find a fossil specimen over there on the east coast in North Carolina. Very interesting. They might have been walking all across North America. And they lived in the Triassic period, a Triassic creature. We don't hear very much about the Triassic period. Now, our Postosuchus was found in 1980, and it was named in 1985 by the paleontologist, let's see if I can get this right, Sankar Chatterjee. Sankar Chatterjee. And that's the paleontologist that named the Postosuchus the crocodile from post. Now you guys, what is going to be our fossil score for this prehistoric genus? It's not a dinosaur. It's not one of those terrible lizards, but it still lived with those dinosaurs. It lived in the Triassic period, like many of those early dinosaur genus, like Herrerasaurus, Musasaurus, some of the early dinosaurs. Now remember, the Postosuchus, about 16 to 20 feet long from its snout all the way back to its long tail and about four feet high. But think about it. If they could be a bipedal walking on two legs, they could probably be higher than only four feet high because they'd get up onto their back legs. That would just be too cool to see a crocodilian running around on two legs. Now remember, they're probably somewhere between 15 to 18 miles per hour as we look at in or look at saltwater crocodiles today. They have a 22 inch deep skull, 47 hook and dagger like teeth very large eyes, a strong body covered in osteoderms. They've got one claw on each hand and one claw on each foot that would have been a little longer than the rest, being able to help them maybe catch all kinds of prey or be able to get traction as they're running around the Mesozoic era. And they probably, they could have been somewhat of a land dweller as they're living back during the late Triassic period. Well, you guys, what is going to be our score, our fossil score for the Postosuchus, one fossil for the weakest, and 10 fossils for some of those strongest dinosaurs. Now this one, technically not a real dinosaur, it is a Triassic period creature, and it might have had a common ancestor like our dinosaurs, an archosaur that lived even before the Triassic period. But you guys, I think I'm going to give this, this prehistoric genus, at the end of the day, how fitting would be going down Route 66 be for our post because today we're giving this creature, this prehistoric genus, the Postosuchus, a 6.6. 6. There we have it, a 6.6, .6, a root 66 for our Postosuchus, the crocodile from Post, a 6.6 .6 on the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. 
What a trip! How was everyone's journey down Route 66? It truly was a lonely and a bumpy road through Arizona and New Mexico before we took a pit stop in Post, Texas for today's review. We had a good time down all Route 66, and don't forget, a 6.6 .6 for our Post Osuchus was just so fitting, so perfect. And what an awesome Triassic period creature. Today I'm even working my Jurassic Park shirt, and I think they need to make a Triassic Park. The Triassic period never gets any love, and I think we gotta give a little bit love to that very first time period of the Mesozoic era. Now, does anyone else like to make those truck drivers pull their chains on their air horns? I love to do this when I was just a little boy, going down Interstate I-80. Now, funny enough, my mom even knows how to drive a big rig. She's been in the trucking industry for over 10 years and currently she drives something called a pilot truck and these trucks are the ones that help guide those big oversized loads down the road and helps keep them safe. She does such a good job guiding all those brachiosaurus sized trucks on the road down the interstate getting them to their destination and I can't wait to see my mom again. I hope she's listening. We need to go have another business meeting at Zen Coffee. I hope you're listening, Mom. I love you just like Littlefoot. Now, you guys, we have to do a quick joke before we go today, before we hit the truck stop. Well, you guys, what is the truck driving Triceratops favorite part of the movie? What is it? What is a truck driving Triceratops favorite part of the movie? Do you guys know what part of the movie is a truck driving Triceratops favorite? It's the trailers! The trailers at the beginning! Or the trailers behind that big rig, that 18-wheeler, that semi-truck! The trailers are perfect for that truck driving Triceratops. Now, during our next podcast episode, everyone, we're jumping off Route 66 and heading deeper into the state of Texas to the city of Dallas. This is where we'll find the grassy knoll and the school book depository. We'll also review a Mesozoic era creature that would make the perfect Kennedy-like dinosaur. Well, that's it, everyone. I need to run inside the truck stop and grab a bunch of snacks before I start my second leg of my trip in this big rig in my 18-wheeler. Can you guys go ahead and fill up the truck with some fossil fuels? I mean gasoline! We need some gas in the truck. But remember, my name is Dinosaur Ranger Anthony, your truck driver-like host for today's podcast down Route 66. And as always, keep digging for dinosaurs. Ah!